Hello everyone, my name is Danielle Lassen and I am going to be talking about a program that is right, currently being piloted by Cedar High School. Um, it is the in-school suspension in the solutions department. First I'm just going to talk a little bit about Cedar High School and the mission and vision that they are striving to do. The mission at Cedar High is to dedicate to cultivating responsible citizens throughout lifelong learning and community involvement. And the vision there is empowering all students to learn at high levels through systematic school-wide support. Um, so they really just try to focus on the students, and not only the students, but also the involvement of their education and just really bringing in everyone and um, trying their hardest to continue in education for everyone. Um, so we will be talking about the solutions program there that is being piloted. It is a new program that was developed about a year ago. This is the second year it was opened. Um, and it is helped, it is developed to help parents and students utilize all interventions when dealing with behavior and attendance throughout the student's education. Um, Kind of what they do is they have two different focuses in the solutions program. They have behavior and attendance. Um, and within those um, different focuses, they have in-school suspension and lunch detention. So we will first talk about the lunch detention, and it will kind of fall into the in-school suspension. So with lunch detention, basically um, how that is ran is it's all through attendance for the students. Um, one thing that Cedar High is trying to do is try to keep all students in school and have them understand why it's important to stay in school and to continue going to classes, um, but also holding parents responsible for them to keep their kids in school as well. Um, so basically what happens is there is a list that is generated each day um, of students that have 10 or more unexcused absences. Um, this doesn't mean excuse, this is just if they're um, not going to class and they're not being excused by a parent or guardian. Um, so once they reach 10 unexcused absences, a phone call is made with a parent. So that's the first intervention we make with a parent. Um, and basically the call is to let them know, hey, are you aware of the absences that your student has been making? Sometimes parents um, have no idea and want more information, so that's a time for um, the staff member to let them know um, kind of what classes they're missing, things like that. Um, and there's sometimes that parents just have forgot to call, so they usually will just call and get those excused. Um, you can get an unexcused absence per class. Um, so if they miss a whole day, that's five unexcused absences. Um, typically, when that happens, they get excused, um, but every now and then, kids just like to miss full days, and parents are sometimes unaware of that, especially if they're working parents. Um, the next intervention is made with the student that is um, at 15 unexcused absences. Um, and kind of, I'll show you kind of what the list looks like when these are all being used. This is just more of a color key for us. So when we do look um, at these names, it, um, will reflect what we need to do with them and what intervention needs to be made at that point. Um, so if they're bold, that just means they had 15 unexcused absences and they have a verbal warning from a team member just letting them know if they reach 20 unexcused absences, um, they would serve a lunch attention. So that's kind of when the lunch attention um, comes into play. And um, once they reach the 20 unexcused absences, um, they would turn orange. A parent is notified at that point. They can either choose to get them excused below 20. However, if not, they would serve a lunch detention. Um, at 25, they would have a solutions follow-up. So basically, when they're in lunch detention, they fill out a form. Um, and that is just our time to understand the student. Um, it just asks them um, why they're missing class. Um, a lot of times, students will open up with us. Um, and that's where another intervention is made if needed. Um, a lot of reasonings for students right now not going to class have just been the lack of motivation, mental health, divorce has been a huge thing, family life. Um, it's just a time for students to open up if needed. 
and it gives the school and the staff members an opportunity to kind of understand where the student's coming from um, and making the strides needed to get them to continue going to school. Um, however, if it doesn't work at that point, we do have a follow up with them at 25 unexcused absences and at 30 unexcused absences, a parent meeting is um, needed. And at that point, they meet with administration, which is usually the vice principal. Um, Danny Lewis is in charge of attendance there. And he will meet with the parent, the student, as well as the head um, staff member in the solutions department. From there, if they've met with the um, parent, they're highlighted. Um, there could be students that are excused from absences. This is sometimes doing with mental health, um, just situations students are in, um, so they're just exempt. Uh, if they're blue on the list, it just means that we have made some type of intervention with them, but they're no longer attending Cedar High School, so it's just a way to indicate that. Um, they can get pulled for in-school suspension, which would be purple, and we'll kind of talk more about that in a second. Um, if they're green, it's just a close watch. Those are students that we would make sure they're in class. They have kind of a different situation and um, we just focus on them a little bit more than we would with some other students. Um, we also have seniors, fourth quarter, since we're in the fourth quarter, we just kind of track um, the seniors, making sure they are staying in school um, and not kind of falling off the wagon this close to graduation. Uh, we track Native American students, Hispanic students, as well as um, if they're blue, um, they would get a home visit from not only our vice principal, Mr. Lewis, but also our resource officer, Officer Taylor, just making sure um, they're okay and they're safe in any situation they may be in. So that is kind of the co color coordinated um, of how the list would work. And like I said, I'll go over that in just a second. Next, this is just kind of a description of what it would look like if they had lunch detention. The only people that can sign to lunch detention would be an administrator, which would be the two vice principals. Cedar High has two vice principals, Eric Feldstead and Danny Lewis, as well as the head, the actual principal, Terry Sanders. And they could be in lunch detention for any reason by them. And if they don't have a name next to them, that means that they are in there for in school suspend or sorry for lunch detention due to absences, um, and that is kind of how that works. And no one else can actually assign to lunch detention or in school suspension unless they are a solutions team member or a administrator. Um, administrator. So this is kind of what the list would look like. Um, it just kind of showing you the different colors. Um, the interventions that had been made. So it looks like there's phone calls made to all parents. Um, it tells you the dates. If you kind of see, there's like a little tab on the side. If you clicked on that tab, it would just go into detail in the conversation, whether you left a message, whether you had a conversation with the parent, anything like that. So that's a huge intervention that we have with parents and we can always refer back to it if needed. Um, and then it just goes off to the other um, tabs saying if they have had a warning, if they need lunch attention, things like that. And it will actually just have the date that they had it. Next, we have in-school suspension. Um, in-school suspension is kind of a huge um, buildup for some students. Um, in-school suspension is not only for behavior, but also for students. Um, if you look on like January 4th, it has a Z next to the name. Um, and it looks like they were just in there for first and second period. Next to it, the behavior said cool down. Some students do have the opportunity to just come into the solutions program and just, if they need to, kind of talk with one of the um, team members there or just to kind of cool down and figure out what they need to do to go back to class. Um, other students are in there for vaping, for um, truancy is for absences if they exceed the 30 unexcused absences, they would have to serve um, in school suspension, um, misuse of technology, false information, and this is just really holding students accountable of their actions um, and giving them some consequences 
and for them to understand that it's not okay to do that. So, you know, what, and, you know, while they're in this, in the, um, in school suspension, they do have, um, a assignment they have to do and just kind of explaining, um, what they need to do to change their behavior, um, and what we can do as well as a school to help them. Um, if they do, um, vape, um, any type of tobacco or, um, alcohol, they would have to complete a course through the health department. Um, and so that's what the course completed means. So that's the only time they would have that type of intervention. Next is just the pros and cons of this program. There's a lot of great about this program, and that's just holding kids accountable, giving parents knowledge about their kids if they're unaware, and that does happen quite a bit. There's working parents, there's parents that think they, you know, their kids are doing one thing, but they're really not. So that's a huge thing um, to have for the parents um, before they're in any, in, like if they get in school suspension, there's always a meeting with administration, the student, and the parent. Um, and same with lunch detention. However, if they exceed that, they would have a full um, parent meeting as well. Um, and so it just really gets the parents involved if they are unaware or they don't have that extra time to put in. Um, and it just makes parents also be accountable for their kids. Um, and just helping the students with their education and trying to keep them in school and out of trouble. Um, some of the cons would be um, just the money that's put into this program. Obviously, you need team members. You need to have a place to do it, things like that. So just the money is a huge thing um, that a lot of schools don't have the funding for. Um, and it's just kids falling through the cracks and getting away with, you know, some of the things that they're doing and maybe not getting caught and, you know, they just drop out or they continue to get in trouble and then they get kicked out. So, you know, there is unfortunately things that happen like that. But with this program, they are trying to um, step away from that and really just get every student to get through the whole four years or finding other ways for them to finish, whether that's getting a mentor or going to SEA, you know, the alternated high school, things like that. Um, and then just taking the kids away from class when they're in school suspension, um, that would be another small con. But I, obviously, if they're not going to school, then it's probably a good thing. Um, and one last thing I just kind of wanted to end here with is um, I found a really good article if you ever had time to read um, and just transforming in school suspension into a positive tool for um, changing behaviors. And it's just a great article regarding um, in school suspension and how it can be a positive tool for students and schools. Um, and I thought it was a great resource and such a... Um, great success for everyone involved and that's why I think it's so great for um, any school to take on this program. There is other schools in the district that are looking into it, um, not only the high schools but the middle schools as well um, and I feel if this is something that can be brought up, so starts in the middle school, they have a better understanding once they hit high school and um, understand like we're just trying to help them and we're just trying to get them to stay in school and you know if it's not happening in middle school they just kind of hit a brick wall in high school um, when they start having all these consequences and I know the middle school at Cedar High School or Cedar Middle School excuse me um, they have similar programs and so kind of goes hand in hand um, and so um, they're it's kind of my um, spiel about the solutions department um, at Cedar High School. Um, if you do ever want to look more into it, it's a great program um, to just know about and um, be able to feel good about sending your child to a place that cares so much about the student's education.